Welcome to the GAC Weekly. Thank you for stopping by. It is a new day, and you know what? We've just decided it's a new season for the program. Welcome to the new year. The old is gone. The new has already come, and we are looking forward to another good year, a great year in the Great American Conference as we are headed towards season number 10 in the GAC. And we're stopping by and visiting with folks from all of the member schools around the Great American Conference. Today's stop is in Magnolia. We get to visit with Jason Anderson, who is the head softball coach of the uh, Mule Riders. And Coach Anderson, listen, what a fantastic season. I, I know we can look ahead some, but my goodness, we have to look back because it's not the distant past right now. It is the very recent past. And you all had a fantastic 2020. Oh, yeah. I mean, the girls did everything we asked them to from day one. You know, we want to compete at a high level based on the success that we've had here recently. And we come in every year. And, you know, when we start the games in February, we want to be still playing this time in May. I, I feel like I should be hopefully playing a super regional this weekend right now or getting ready for one if, if, if our goals would have would have came true that we were set out to do. But they did everything I asked them to do. They worked hard. We played a tough non-conference schedule. And then we were a few weeks into conference and, and undefeated in conference. And uh, so uh, they, you know, they hit the ball, played defense, pitched it well. So I was very, very proud of my team. I'm very proud of the way they brought it every day and, and fought hard. And uh, I had nothing, obviously no complaints about what they did for us. And, and they brought it every single day. Well, and, and the pace you were on, I, I don't think there's any question that uh, you all were on a pace to be playing in the Super Regional right now and, and to continue the season even beyond that. 22-2 and two was the record when everything was shut down in March, and that included a 12-0 and 0 record in conference play and a 16-game winning streak that is currently active. <laughs> when yeah. you head back, I mean, you're going to come back on that 16 game winning streak tops in the country on that. That also includes a number one ranking in the NFCA division two softball poll. So congratulations for that coach. Yeah. Hey, somebody had to be number one in the last one. It might as well be us, right? I mean, we maybe pull a UCF and claim a national championship or something and try to do something like that. Like they did football a couple of years ago, but uh, no, it was good. I think it was a test of how hard the girls were playing. We played a really tough schedule. Uh, you know, had a couple losses and early on to get some really good teams, both ranked teams, at the, you know, at the, in the final poll. So uh, to be on that 16 game win streak and, and undefeated in conference, I think that was just showing the, the direction we were headed. And the, the number one ranking, I think, was just a testament to how, how well the girls have played. I was going to ask if you'd been measuring places in the gym or actually out on the field for the banner. Uh, yeah, we need one. <laughs> you need one. <laughs> hey, even if it's just like a, a, you know, shortened season, you know, national champs or something like that. We need something to honor these girls, I think, because I think, you know, obviously, like, you know, all joking aside, they uh, they did everything we asked them to do, you know, and as some things were out of our control as, as a country, really. So they came in and they they played hard and it just happened to happened to get cut short for all these players, especially the spring sports and, and all these spring sports. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm very proud of them. And, and to be the number one team in that final poll is a big accomplishment for my group. Well, let's talk about some of those accomplishments really quickly then, you know, with, with just, again, a shortened season. So numbers, they're going to, you know, be a little bit skewed just because it's a shortened sure. season. I mean, the, the drag of the season is going to drag down probably some of the, the batting averages and maybe cause uh, a couple of the ERAs to, to lift just a little bit just because of the wear and tear, not because of the, the, the talent or the ability of, sure. the ability of, of the team. But, I mean, you, you have Favela hitting a better than 500. I mean, you know, yeah. you have a couple of players that, that are, that are uh, you know, north of the 400 mark there. Talk about that. Well, I mean, top to bottom, we hit the ball really well this year. You mentioned Issa. She was a big-time hitter for us in the middle of the lineup. She's always a tough out, has a lot of natural pop, you know, hit some home runs. But also, even when she mishits it and rolls over on it, it's usually hard enough where it finds the five-six hole or something like that. She's just a, a really tough out in the middle of our lineup. And then, you know, like I said, we were hitting, I believe, close to 360 as a team or something like that. And it was just something that – you know, top to bottom, we, we just had we had girls just just getting it done, you know, from the lead off all the way down to, to the nine hole. And then we flipped the lineup over. So um, we had, uh, you know, we're hitting a lot of home runs. I think we were number one in the nation at the time in home runs, which is kind of something we like to do here at SAU. We like we like the long ball. We live and die by that three run home run. But um, these girls just just bought in, man, from from day one. And I keep saying that but they were just they were doing everything that we asked them to do offensively. And they were find a way to get on base, find a way to get the hit when we need it and, and doing it against some really good competition as well. Well, coach, I mean, you know, the, the way that uh, your team plays, obviously the, the run production is there, but you just get one, just one of those three run home runs and you've got the staff to be able to back that up. I mean, eight yeah, shutouts, pretty good shape. 
<laughs> yeah, I think that's this season. Uh, opponents batting average at, at, at 197. I think the team ERA was less than two. I believe one, one, yes. 192 uh, was yes, the team ERA on that. So, you know, you, you, you had it going in the circle as well. Well, we always get caught up on the offensive numbers, and I'm an offensive guy. I love offense. I love home runs. That's what I do. But we do not have the success we've had here the last several years. It, it starts in the circle, and I think everybody knows that in our game in softball. If you got a pitcher that can give you a chance to win, then, then you, you've always got a chance to win the game. And so with, with Sydney Waiter, you know, reigning GAC Pitcher of the Year coming back, and she was off to a 13-0 start. Vic, of course, she was Pitcher of the Year two years ago. Victoria Taylor and a first-team All-American. She was still battling some shoulder stuff this year, but was still being very productive for us. We got some quality innings out of Issa. Christine Kistner, a transfer, we came in, got us some innings. So uh, we were staffed pretty well top to bottom, which – in my opinion, is the reason we were doing so well. The runs are fun, and we like scoring eight, nine runs a game, and it does make pitching and playing defense easy when you have a big lead, but it always – it starts in the circle. So if you're not strong there, then uh, I think it's something that you're not going to get the success that we're trying to trying to have here. You know, with everything that's going on, and right now we're speaking with Jason Anderson, who's the head softball coach at Southern Arkansas, right here on the GAC Weekly. I encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Midwest Sports Net's YouTube channel, which is the home of the GAC Weekly. And, you know, thinking about this team and now all of the contingencies that are kicking in around to try to, to prepare for next season, I believe we're going to be able to play ball on the fields, the pitches, the courts, the diamonds, you name it, in 2020-2021. That's my personal opinion. Um, but with, with those things kicking in, especially by the time we get around to spring sports again, you're going to have a number of these players coming back and the eligibility opportunities are there. Talk about some of the 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 players that, that would have been seeing their final yeah. season, this final campaign, that, that will be back. Well, we call it, we're going to pick up where we left off. That's kind of what I've been telling the girls since all this happened. You know, we were on a 16-game win streak, number one team in the nation at the time in the coaches poll, and, and we just got some unfinished business. So a lot of these seniors are taking advantage of that. We had a few that were not going to, but the ones we mentioned, Wader, Vic, uh, Linus, Sway Sway, Faith Otts, uh, but, you know, we had Fagan, Fabella, all of them are just just big time players for us. So, um, you know, we expect them to hopefully come back, uh, pick up where they left off. There's still a lot of question marks, like you said, about the season. I'm kind of a firm believer in what you're saying as well. My opinion is I think the games are going to be played and, you know, maybe in a different way as far as how we got when I mean, you know, not shake hands and things like that. And there's going to be some some things in place that'll that'll be a little bit different. But I think at the end of the day, the softball games are going to get played and 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 we're bringing in some. You know, we had some really good freshmen this last year that were getting developed that'll, you know, get that year back. We're still bringing in some quality transfer kids that went ahead and decided to come on and not go back to junior college for a year. So we've got some great additions that we're, we're going to be adding that'll get those years back. And, and I expect us to truly pick up where we left off. We've got a great team. Our team chemistry was awesome. And we just got some, some I just know these girls are just, just biting to just get back out there. <laughs> I, I believe it. I believe it. You know, I thought about something too. You have somebody else there on campus and I was wondering if anyone in compliance had checked on the eligibility of Brooke Goad. Yeah. I'd like, wonder if we can get her a year back from 2018. She might hit a few home runs for us. She might hit a three run home run every now and then. <laughs> that, uh, I would, I would imagine. So I, of course, just teasing coach, but I, you know, you have a lot of firepower coming back and that would almost be unfair, I guess at that point in time. Uh, but still, you know, it's a fantastic season. Congratulations to you all. And, and looking ahead, you know, the, the unfinished business, I believe, is probably going to be a, a mantra for n numerous, numerous teams with that idea. But it's there. Uh, Coach, the, the one last thing is, you know, I, I don't know that this is lightning in a bottle for you all because it's a program as a whole. Your program has been built toward this and you, you have a continued success season in and season out. Uh, but there, that that hard work, there, you know, there's something magic about each year, and uh, you know, it, I know there's going to be a lot of hard work that goes into that too. Oh yeah, and you know, they're going to come back. Like I said, each team's different. We always say around here, uh, the faces change, but the expectations do not. And you know, the being able to bring some of those seniors back that'll, you know, that, that can kind of go out on their own terms and and not be forced to to play, you know, to play their last game, and and just the heart and the passion that this team had. They all get along, man. These girls love each other. We all love each other, and it's just we're going to we're going to start from day one. The second they say we can practice and get together and enjoy each other's company and and get back to a little 
you know, being back to normal a little bit, we're going to, we're going to hit the ground running and, and, you know, it's truly our expectation to pick up where we left off. It's a tough region. It's a tough, you know, softball games are tough, but, but I think we're going to have a team that's going to be able to go out there and compete at a really high level. Coach, one last question while I have you here really quickly, and I know you've seen a number of years in the Great American Conference. The conference itself is heading into its 10th season in existence, uh, a decade now, and, and of course you've seen growth. I think the conference has earned respect in many sports and in many ways, softball notwithstanding with some incredibly talented teams over the years, uh, and not just not just your program, sure. uh, a number of programs uh, with, within the GAC as well. Talk about the GAC going to the 10th year. Well, you know, we talk about as coaches all the time and our colleagues and other coaches in the conference about how, you know, our league can really compete at a high level. We can compete with MLAA and Northern Sun. I think there were some questions about that when we first moved into the GAC, which was a little before my time, but I was here where we're, you know, kind of hearing about it. But, you know, you look at the success that Southeastern Oklahoma had in 2014 and then us and Arkansas Tech since 2016. Harding made a great run to a super there in 17. So you're seeing these names here on a, on a regular basis of the teams that are that are making it. And, and we do have a tough region and we have, you know, two national champions out of this region in the last, you know, four years with, with Mankato and then Augustana this last year. So it is a tough region. But I think if you look how we stack up against these teams day in, day out as a conference that, they, they know how the GAC stands and, and what we're going to bring to the field every day, for sure. I understand, and I agree with you, Coach. I agree with you. Thank you very much for taking time with us right. today, by the way, on the GAC Weekly. Coach Jason Anderson, the head softball coach of the Southern Arkansas Mule Riders. Coach, coach again, thank you, and uh, congratulations on the season. I know we kind of tease about that banner just a little bit, but uh, I, don't, I don't think we need to tease too much. Somewhere down the line, there needs to be something like that that honors and recognizes this season that, that you all put together shortened though it was still a fantastic year and concluding as the number one team in the country i agree i think these girls deserve it but uh you know like i said i appreciate the coverage and appreciate you reading out reaching out to us and, and, and giving us the interview all right i appreciate you as well god bless you all thank you for watching the gac weekly today have a great day I'm back with more as we continue our trip through the great american conference on the gac weekly headed to this new season